on Thursday mornings at this time for good policies. Tuesday mornings at this time. I Stop do pushing the week the away, Bell. Don't I? Yeah. On Tuesday mornings with good policies with Barrett Insurance Agency. I need another sip of my coffee, buddy. Uh, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm guessing you didn't have to travel Route 2 in St. Johnsbury near Fairbanks scales, huh? Uh, not this morning, no, no. My my route took me uh, 93 to 91 to you. Okay. So, yeah. So listeners out there, the reason we let in with that is because right now, last thing we knew, there's a dump truck on its side right near Riley's Fish Shack that's taken out all the power lines. It's uh, We don't know anything other than that. We don't know really? injuries. We don't know anything. We just know the road's closed. I hope everybody's safe. We do, too. The yeah. picture Jen sent us that doesn't look all that bad, but there's power lines everywhere. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. So we talk insurance, good policies, and insurance for folks like me, the average Joe, is impossible to understand. It is. It, it is. It really can be. But I will tell you this, Okay. Today, our theme is going to be automobile insurance. I have learned one thing. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. If you happen to be involved in an accident, mm-hmm. fault or no fault, never, ever say, I'm sorry. Boom. And that goes against everything we're taught as, as kids. Well, you can find other pleasantries and courtesies. Right. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. But there's a reason for that. And it is simply, what, from what I understand, it is legally qualifies as saying I'm guilty. Do I remember this correctly? Yeah, and I wouldn't go so far as legally, but in terms of muddying up the waters, it can. Because then, you know, then you're giving kind of a sense of, oh, it's not my fault to the other party. Um, And the other party will have that that (laughs) sense in their head through the whole process. And that could really slow the process down. Now, remember, you know, determining who's at fault in a car accident is not up to you necessarily. I know we want to be, but it's not necessarily up to us. Go ahead. You well, no, no, I'm ac- that's perfect because my question was who does ulti- ultimately determine? Because in my limited knowledge of it, the insurance company would do that, but am I wrong? No, you're right. Okay. Insurance companies will determine faults uh, based on just what's common and what's known, you know? And, and you know, so I'll give you some examples of uh, scenarios and you're going to tell me whether the person's at fault or not, all right? Oh, great. A I, test. I am the person, all right? I am backing my car up out of a parking lot a parking space, and uh, a car comes up behind me really fast and hits me. Am I at fault? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Wow. I'm proud of you. Really? So I was backing up. Backing up, most likely, is going to be the at-fault party. I find statistically that that is, that is 99.9% of the case. In fact, I dare, I dare say 100% of the case. Now, is that why, uh, like when we do our driver's test, we get a point taken away when we back out of a driveway, too? Yeah, that's why you have those turnaround points uh, of, you know, you pull off the side, directional, back in, make sure you're looking, and then make the turn. So, yeah, backing up is really going to be an at-fault situation because you were backing up. So uh, the other person would have had right away, so to speak. Whether they were there or not, whether they came flying in or not, that's that's a he said, she said. The determining factor is you were backing up and boom, all right? So the opposing direction is... In a lane of traffic. Yeah, that that can really that can plop, you know muddy things up. And I'll tell you, even I at that situation would go, it wasn't my fault. This person came out of nowhere. I looked and I safely was backing up, but still, like it's most likely going to be considered a net fault. All right. Question two. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am driving <laughs> behind you. All right. And you slam on the brakes, whether it's because an animal or a child or a person or a car cut you off. You Road slammed rage. on the brakes, and I ran into you. Who's at fault? I am, again. No. Okay. I'm following too closely without proper distance and yield time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, these are some of the things to think about is that, you know, we can all in our own mind assess whether we're at fault or not, but you really need to leave that to the uh, the police if they respond to the scene and take statements. Ultimately, it's going to come down to the insurance companies. Now, here's the fun part, right? Because insurance is has such a wonderful name to begin with, right? Everybody loves insurance. Um, to muddy up the waters even more, Insurance companies also, there are situations where it's just really tough to determine who's at fault. There can be shared fault situations where both policies have to respond to some degree. So the best thing you can do is have a clear recollection of what happened. 
right? And make sure you exchange. And I can't stress this part of an accident enough. I don't care who you think's at fault. I don't care if you know definitively you are at fault. Get that person's information, get their name, get their home address, get their phone number, get their insurance information. All that's on an ID card, except for the phone number. Grab all of it, have it at the ready because all you're going to do is slow down the process of a claim determination by not having that information. Another part, if you think they're at fault and you're not calling anybody because you think they're going to call their insurance company, call their insurance company. What are you talking about? It'd be the first thing I do. Somebody the, hit me. I know. Many people go, well, yeah, they called. And um, um, yeah, I'm supposed to hear from them. Oh, great. Well, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> they didn't call. You need to call. Um, so I don't think there's any problem with calling somebody's insurance company with their policy. That's why you need their information. You could say, uh, you know, John Doe from, you know, XYZ company, uh, hit me and here's what happened. Well, now they're going to call John Doe and get that information and try to cooperate a story, figure out who's at fault. And then the investigation begins, but don't ever just assume that somebody's going to do that. So also too, uh, you want to do it no matter the severity uh, of yeah. any motor vehicle incident as yeah. well. Right? Gone, gone, gone. And you could you could tell me this, right? Gone are the days where you have that little tiny fender bender. And it's like, ah, don't worry about it. We don't need insurance in this. We'll be fine. Yeah, a couple hundred bucks. Just just give me some money. Yeah, that couple hundred dollars back years ago on today's cars is now twenty five hundred dollars. Right. So, do you really want to be paying twenty five hundred dollars, or do you want to file a claim? Let's, well, let's file a claim. If you've got one of those cars that has lane assist and or driver assist braking and stuff like that, yeah. you've got those bumpers with all the sensors and cameras and stuff. So you're right; it it, it is expensive. It's very expensive, and and to have an out of pocket expense versus having maybe yeah, let's say you are considered at fault, right? So you have an at fault accident, twenty thousand dollars is paid out. Most companies, if you've had a good driving record for a long time with them or any period. Of time, three years or more, probably not going to see uh, any really hard repercussions like a non-renewal or anything. Yeah, you'll probably see an increase in your premium for the next couple of years. It only sticks with you for three to five years. So only 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars more a year versus thousands of dollars out of pocket. Which would you rather pay? <laughs> None of the above, but <laughs> I'm on that page too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the test this morning, two questions. I got one right. I got a 50, right? You got a 50. I, I forgot my red ink marker uh, pen, so I'll bring it next week. You ain't touching my Sharpie. Just tell folks how to get in touch with you. Uh, give us a call. 748 Two two four. You can find us on Portland Street in St. Johnsbury online, thebarrettagency.com, Google, Facebook, and YouTube. Just look for Barrett Insurance Agency. Can I see your insurance information, please? Uh, it might be expired. <laughs> How sad is that? Oh, gosh. We'll leave that alone. We're back to the music now. Magic in the morning with Rosie.